Welcome to Medified, a podcast about web dev and tech news that piqued my interest. I'm your host, Richard, and I'm looking forward to this episode. All right, listeners, let's talk. Once again, I know all things bun. You know, that super fast JavaScript runtime that's also a bundler, a transpiler, and a package manager. Yep, that bun. Introducing bun version 0, 0.7.3. What's new? Oh, just the ability to cover your code and filter those pesky tests using regexp. Andy, right? And if you're a bug hunter, good news. They have squashed some in async Node.js functions, bun SQLite, and a few other tricky spots. A quick trip down the memory lane shows us that version 0.6.13 gave us a mock date, a speedier base64, and some neat fixes. Version 0.7.0 brought the party with web workers, reliability improvements, and a chef's kiss of new features. 0.7.1 made ES modules run like they drank an espresso shot or three, and version 0.7.2 has brought even more compatibility goodies and bug fixes. Now, for those new to the bun party, installing is a breeze. Just curl, npm, or even brew it up. And if you're already a bun head, a simple bun upgrade will do the trick for you. Code coverage got you down? No, not anymore. With bun's new built-in support, you can just toss in a coverage flag and boom. Instant code coverage report right in your terminal. Textual happiness at its finest. Do you fancy filtering tests by name? Well, you're in luck. Thanks to the minus T flag, your filtering dreams are now a reality. There is also this hot new feature, running bun with a hot flag, which now clears your terminal when reloading. And for all you plugin enthusiasts out there, they now need to be loaded with the preload flag. This is the way. And let's not forget the Node.js compatibility boosters. We've got a nifty new dns.get servers function and some essential bug fixes. Plus, if you've been struggling with initializing bun in a directory that's not your current workspace, bun has got your bag. With the new bun in it, you can specify a directory path. Easy peasy. Last but not least, a bunch of web API globals have been made writable, which means better support for Angular server-side rendering. Before we bid farewell to Bun for now, a quick note for all you coding wizards out there. Bun is on the hunt for C or C++ and Zig engineers. So if you fancy helping shape the future of JavaScript, why not hop on board? And as always, for full deeds and more nerdy updates, you can check out their complete changelog. Presenting the new talk of the tech town, Van.js, a grab-and-go reactive UI framework that is super compact and doesn't use React or JSX. It has just dropped its 1.0.0 version. That's right. Van.js is now a full-blown adult in the world of UI frameworks. After truckloads of caffeine and an inbox full of constructive feedback, the dear maintainers did the thing and pushed out the release. So, what's the 411 on this new release? First off, that chunky, clunky state-binding code. Say goodbye. Now it's sleeker than my new haircut. Remember that code that used to look like it was running a marathon and circles? Well, it's now trimmed down and doing a neat sprint. And guess what? We don't need to declare dependencies anymore. Van.js is now the Sherlock Holmes of code. It detects everything for you. Elementary, my dear Watson. There's also this cool Van Derive thing. Uh, trust me, it's not as nerdy as it sounds. It basically simplifies things like defining derived states or, in non-geek speak, making things look neat and organized. And it even has side effects. And no, not the kind you get from that midnight taco truck. It's more about reacting when stuff changes in your code. And for all the package junkies out there, there's NPM support as well. So you can build your web apps with Wheat, Parcel, or just about any tool you fancy. Plus, if you ever wanted to treat Null as a valid guest at your property value party, now you can. But wait, there's more. Van.js is now like that cool friend who doesn't freak out when you spill a drink. It handles errors smoothly without tossing out all your UI nodes. 
Looking ahead, the maintainers are thinking about some grab-and-go UI components. Stuff like modals, tabs, and banners. Also, rumor has it Ban.js might get a performance check pitting it against React. And hey, even with all these fancy new updates, Ban.js still fits in your digital pocket. With a gzipped bundle of just 0.9 kilobytes, it's the elf of reactive UI frameworks. A quick footnote for the update aficionados, 1.0.1 was also just released. It's a minor tweak, keeping things stylish and consistent. So make sure to check it out in the included link. Today, we're once again diving into the land of Deno, the hot JavaScript runtime. And guess what? Deno just dropped version 1.36, and there are some shiny new things to talk about. First up, Deno is upping its security game. Remember those allow flags we all loved? Well, now we can play hard to get with our programs using the deny flags. So now you can both allow and deny any network communication, file system access, or other potentially sensitive APIs. The testing scene is getting a massive glow up as well. We've got nifty new formatters for those who want their test results to look pretty. And for my Node.js peeps out there, Deno is rolling out the red carpet for you. They've improved Node.js compatibility like running npm scripts, even if they're not binaries. We also get some quality of life upgrades. Now, if you run a non-existent binary with deno.command, Deno won't just coldly tell you it's missing. It will compassionately tell you which binary it cannot find. It's the little things, am I right? And last but not least, the language server protocol got a facelift as well. If you're a Visual Studio Code junkie, your Deno experience just got a tad bit smoother. And if you're running Deno, head on to your terminal and just type Deno upgrade to hop on this wild ride. And if you're a curious cat, there's even more in the full release notes on GitHub. A couple of years back, Amazon revealed a 100 millisecond extra load time cost them 1% in sales. That's right. Every second matters in e-commerce. And let's face it, building an efficient e-commerce site is kinda hard. That's why Next.js Commerce 2.0 is here to save the day with its dynamic storefronts and simplified architecture. At the same time, it's also riding high on the features from the recently released app router. E-commerce sites, historically, have been these overloaded burritos. Too many requests, heavy assets, and an obsession with personalization. It's no wonder things slow down. It's the tech equivalent of trying to stuff that extra guacamole, which ends up leaking out anyway and making a mess on your plate. The first version of Next.js Commerce, which dropped back in 2020, was pretty awesome, but this new 2.0 version takes it up several notches. With Next.js 13 in the mix and the new app router, e-commerce sites can finally be both dynamic and fast. And the Lighthouse scores for the mobile and desktop versions are off the charts. A fresh, modern design is now in play, making your store not just efficient, but also snazzy looking. Plus, with the new Edge Runtime feature, you can sort of have your store everywhere at once. No more waiting for a page to load, just because you are on the other side of the world. And with the server actions in alpha, say goodbye to unnecessary API routes and embrace a sleeker client-side bundle. In a nutshell, if you're looking to up your e-commerce game and not get buried in the chaos of complex setups and sluggish performance, this thing might just be your new best friend. So go check it out, folks, and maybe, just maybe, give your online store that much-needed revamp. Thanks for tuning in to Minified. If you like what I do, make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast and share it with your friends and colleagues. Catch you later.